Happy weekend everyone and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security geek Corey Nockreiner and this is the episode for the week starting June 1st, 2015. Now this week I've been traveling to London for the Information Security Conference and to The Hague for a WatchGuard Partner Conference. So I've only been able to post one daily security byte this week. So for this weekly episode I'll share that one daily security byte but I'll also summarize two other big stories from the week. Let's jump right in. Wednesday's story is a Japan pension system data breach. Big news early this week was the Japan pension system had a data breach where they lost the records of 1.25 Japanese citizens. Now the breach happened due to a spear phishing email. Bad guys sent a very well targeted spear phishing email that had a document that seemed to have to do with uh, the changes to the pensioning system uh, that of course an employee fell for and that's what infected his computer and allowed the bad guys to get into the internal data. The data that was lost was typical PII or personally identifiable information, your name, your address, and things like that. But some experts are worried that by having access to your address, the bad guys can change your address so that your financial information gets sent to them as well. So if you're a Japanese pensioner, you'll probably want to do credit monitoring in the near future to make sure that bad guys don't get more of your data. So anyways, typical spear phishing attack. If you've watched my videos over the months, I've been talking a lot about spear phishing. This is really something you need to train your users about. Phishing has become much more targeted and is much better at getting users to click on enticing attachments and links, so we need to make sure our users know how to deal with that. As an aside, it's interesting to note that the Japanese pension system had a data breach of over 50 million records as well back in, I think, 2007-2008. But in that case, the data leak was due to a lost record, not actually a cyber attack. Though this week was full of nation-state data breaches, one of the funner stories of the week was a Mattel toy that could crack open your garage door. Sammy Kamkar is a security researcher that found out that his particular garage door suffered from a fixed code rather than a rolling code. A modern garage door should use some sort of rolling code security key so that when you press the button they come up with a new code every time. But Sammy Kamkar found that he could actually hijack a Mattel toy, I think it's called an IM Me toy, and he put an antenna on it, and he found that he could use this toy to actually crack in a few seconds the fix code used by many garage doors. So he could walk through a neighborhood with this in his pocket, press a button, and open his garage door, and when he tested it on two of his friend's garage doors, it worked as well. Now many garage door manufacturers, including the ones that he found he could open, said they use rolling codes. But according to Kamkar's research, some of these garage doors still use fixed codes. And in a video he posted on the subject, he gives you some tips on on how to figure out if your garage door opener actually suffers from this. In any case, it's not a huge deal. Uh, you do probably want to have a garage door that has a rolling code because this would be very, very good for burglars. If they can, within a few seconds, open your garage door, they can probably get into your house much easier. One physical tip, if you have a door between your garage and your house, you might want to lock it at night. By far, the biggest story this week broke on Thursday, and this was the breach to the U.S. government's Office of Personnel Management, or OPM. And if you haven't heard of that, it's essentially the HR offices for lots of federal agencies, except maybe the State Department, which has its files elsewhere. Anyways, according to anonymous sources at OPM, they had a network security intrusion that allowed the attackers to steal 4 million personnel records. These are records of many government workers workers that work at many federal agencies. And these records go back 30 years to 1995. About 2.1 million records are for current employees, while about 1.9 million are for historical employees. Now, not everything is known about what was stolen, but it could include things like social security number, birth date, and even financial records, so a lot of very personally identifiable information, or PII. Later in the week, the OPM did confirm the breach, and the US 
U.S. government blamed it on Chinese nation-state actors, although they really haven't shared any evidence. So far, we don't know how the attackers got in, but allegedly uh, one of the security guys found the breach while he was upgrading systems. And it turns out the breach may have happened way back in December of last year, and they've been on the system since then. According to some sources, the government uses an intrusion prevention-like system or an internal monitoring system called Einstein 3. And this system is actually fed data from the NSA about attacks they find online, including targeted attacks. And even this system actually didn't prevent this breach from happening. Other researchers, like those from iSight, who studied the Anthem data breach against the big healthcare provider, said that it looked very similar to this breach and that Chinese nation-state actors may be stealing information in both of those cases. But again, no one shared any evidence of how they're attributing these attacks to China. And of course, the Chinese government denies these attacks. Now, this is a pretty big deal for federal workers. There's a lot of sensitive information in these databases. The OPM says they're going to offer free credit monitoring for 18 months. So be sure to use that if you're a federal employee. So what can we learn about this? Well, without knowing exactly how the breach happened, there's not a lot we can do to talk about preventative measures. Other than I suspect spear phishing was probably involved, so you might want to make sure your employees know about spear phishing. However, there are some things we can learn from this. First of all, one thing we should learn about this is security is not just about prevention. It's about discovery and response. Like in many cases, we don't learn of breaches until long after they've happened. In this case, if it's true the attackers were in OPM's network in December, the question we should be asking is why didn't they know until now? Now. And it's because we don't have good tools to help us discover incidents in our network, or at the very least, we're not monitoring them. So as you design your network security, be sure to use visibility and analytic tools that can help you find incidents in your network. And most importantly, monitor these tools. You have to be always watching your network. Security is not just about putting equipment in a rack and having it prevent attacks. It's about your security professionals monitoring those tools and actually finding incidents so that you can take care of them before they cause any problems. Another thing we can learn from this is we need to focus on protecting our data rather than the network itself. We should be using encryption, especially when data is at rest too. That way if a bad guy gets on our network, they still may not be able to make use of the data they steal. Finally, you might want to consider document rights management type uh, solutions to make sure that you can handle who can access certain documents. In any case, this was a pretty big and concerning data breach, and I'm pretty sure we'll continue to learn about it as the weeks go on. If you learn anything from it, it should be to always be watching. Have visibility and analytics tools that can help you figure out what's happening in your network to make sure the keys aren't flying out the doors of your kingdom. Well, that's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it interesting and educational. As always, if you want more security information, please visit our blog and subscribe to it. You can find it at blog.watchguard.com or watchguardsecuritycenter.com. Besides posting the video there, I have links to a reference section with a whole bunch of other security stories from the week. On top of that, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at TechAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Finally, if you want these videos as soon as I post them, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube video. By the way, this week I'm attending Gartner's uh, Security and Risk Management Summit in the Washington, D.C. area. Though I'll try to post videos, I may not be able to get to them every day, though I'll give it my best try. Anyways, thanks for watching, and as always, here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.